Okay, great. Hello, Taylor. It's so good to see you. So good to see you, Jessica. Yes, absolutely. Um, so today, um, Taylor, you are here with us from Principal Gallery in a Alexandria, Virginia, um, a beautiful gallery. And um, yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and your role there? And um, yeah, how long have you been there? I have been with the gallery for four years. Um, I am the assistant director there now. Um, I started as a gallery assistant when I was still in school. <laughs> so I was doing my art history degree along with working at the gallery. And um, yeah, it's just kind of been four years of growth and learning more about art business versus art history. Um, yes. But there's just so many things we do as a team. Um, the biggest thing is, cause it is a small staff, which most galleries have. Um, <laughs> So we kind of all play different roles, um, you know, get to engage with artists, get to put on shows, get to work with clients to put together previews for shows. Um, so there's just so many things that we do and it's always changing. Um, personally, I manage the blog for the gallery. That's something that oh, wow. is like mainly a designated task for me. Um, it's principalarttalk.com is the blog. Oh, cool. So we do stuff where it's things for what we did, you know, blogs for how we evolved for the pandemic um, mm -hmm. and for shows that we have coming up. So mm -hmm. it's just kind of a broad thing and it's such, it's so fun. <laughs> That's just, it's different every day. Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems like um, you guys show like a lot of different artists, a lot of different kinds of artists, even though it seems like um, you focus on contemporary realism. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Uh -huh. um, that's really is our main focus. Um, we're definitely evolving, you know. Um, Michelle, she's the owner of the gallery, Michelle Marceau, and she started, um, which is kind of a mixture. She loves Russian art, so she actually has a great collection of like 20th, 21st century Russian artwork um, oh, okay. that we carry, which is one thing that's a little bit different than what we normally carry, but mm -hmm. it's a gorgeous collection of work that she mm -hmm. has. Yeah, that's amazing. And um, yeah, why don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about the actual gallery? How old is it? And, um, and like, why was it started? Um, what was Alexandria like back then? You know? Yeah. So um, Michelle has owned it for 27 years. It's now wow. 27 years old. Um, and then she opened our Charleston, South Carolina location in 2012. Mm -hmm. And so she started that um, and she used to work at a gallery in Georgetown um, mm -hmm. and she worked there for about three years as the director. And then she st actually started on Cameron Street in Old Town in mm -hmm. four. And then she went to King's King Street in 98. So that's where she actually where we are now. Um, and it was a gorgeous location on Cameron Street, you know, just open windows, kind of a little bit different than what we have now. Um, mm -hmm but it was so beautiful and she really just fell in love with the business of art and because her background is just really just business um and yeah so it's grown so much and she's got it nailed down with the changes and how art changes and she really knows how to work with clients in that way mm -hmm. but it's, I mean, Old Town is kind of a classic in some ways like there are people that still come to her they've been clients for the full 20 years, they've stayed very loyal to her. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing, that's amazing. And um, yeah, so talking about art history versus um, contemporary art today, mm -hmm. well, I suppose we're all making art history today. We're making mm -hmm. tomorrow's art history today, right? Um, so, yeah. so what would you say are some of the differences that you see um, with art history, like any particular art historical movements versus like today? Um, do you feel like there's any particular movement today that's like really strong in the art world? I wouldn't say necessarily. It's kind of hard because I have like disrupted realism in my mind uh -huh. right now, but I see why I see trends and things and I can associate paintings that I see um, from my art history background and what the trends, um, but there's so many things at stay consistent, you know, with landscapes, within still life, within figurative, there's mm -hmm. stuff that's very classical and it remains beautiful, but then seeing artists that just change it. Um, yeah, yeah. With mm -hmm. us focusing in traditional realism, we do have artists that cross over 
into impressionism and abstraction that kind of mix the two. Um, and like, for example, Jeffrey Johnson is one of our bestsellers, um, along with Jeremy Mann, Lynn Boggess, and Jeff kind of has that impressionism kind of mixed in with his figurative, but okay. everything is inspired by real locations, whether mm -hmm. it's New York, whether it's Rome, whether it's his own home of North Carolina, um, mm -hmm. he finds that inspiration and then he doesn't take it where it's, okay, this is exactly where that building is set and this is it verbatim. He just kind of mix it and works in his memory, not from photos. Mm -hmm. And then with Jeremy, you know, his figurative and his cityscapes have evolved, you know, coming from very rendered to getting more abstract. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Lynn Boggess, he's a landscape painter that is, um, he works plein air and he's working with oil paint, cement trowels, palette knife. Mm -hmm. And, but when you look at it, Mm -hmm. it's just all texture that's all you see yes. in the paint yeah and it's experiencing one is just amazing amazing <laughs> like, it, it, it reminds yeah. me of icing like his, yeah. his um, <laughs> like all his layers and stuff it looks like you just want to like lick it off or something <laughs> you will say that all the time there's something yeah. so satisfying about looking at his work and then seeing him paint it when mm -hmm. you can line or something it's it's amazing and people do have a tendency they want to you know they want to touch it they want to say and you're like that painting is probably still wet because there's yeah. so <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> that's probably look... that's probably true yeah that's yeah crazy. <laughs> and but he can look abstract in some ways like if you're to look at it like just from that point of view where you're just looking at the paint the layers of it, versus mm -hmm. then you see it as a whole landscape and yeah. so it's nice that we can kind of flow back and forth and how artists can they have the ability, they can easily say, yeah, I can paint like a John Singer Sargent. I can do it just like this. And I would love to paint like John Singer Sargent. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and they, they can. And they, so many of them, especially figure painters, pull so much inspiration from him, but they find their niche and they go in that direction. I mean, you know, as an artist, you have to continue to evolve and move forward in your work and take it to that next level and not yeah. be afraid. Yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, that's so inspiring already. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cause I was talking with a friend recently about um, the art world in general. And we were saying how, like, it actually doesn't really seem like there's like one particular, um, one particular style. That's like, um, like all the rage right now, it seems like really anything goes. And then um, yeah. Yeah. What would you say to that? Like, I agree. Looking at, like a broad spectrum of like the entire art world. See that that is from that it's there is so much out there, mm -hmm. and I think one of the most challenging things about my job is to try to stay in touch with every single thing that's out there because I find myself looking at something, finding a new artist, and I'm like, oh, I wish I knew about them sooner, and mm -hmm. it's hard. People expect you. They 100 percent. They say like. When I say, yeah, my background's art history. They're like, oh, well, do you know? And I'm like, hold on. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I can't know. It's just nearly impossible. There's so much art out there, but mm -hmm. you can notice trends and what's popular, especially watching the market grow. And mm -hmm. there's, you know, it goes, everything is flowing. It's mm -hmm. different. And watching how artists can go with that market and stay consistent with their market is mm -hmm. really valuable. And it's hard to see... The trends, I mean, I think some like looser works I've seen a lot, like, you know, how taking still life that can kind of verge on abstraction, mm -hmm. um, the big one, and artists taking just standard things like cityscapes and changing them and how mm -hmm. to look at them differently, I think mm -hmm. is a common thing and which I love, you mm -hmm. know, as a gallery, we're looking for that. We're looking for stuff that we have that goes in line with what we already carry but how does it go differently you know like how does it change it's not always obvious to see you know we get a submission and we're like this looks like it goes in line with this artist but they step a little bit further in a further direction and right. that's mm -hmm. really cool and um love to see it you know yeah yeah definitely um you know it's funny too because um sometimes I don't know, like, um, so my friend, um, Carrie was, uh, curating this show that I'm helping him put together. And, um, we were talking about like, 
curating things and like looking at like hundreds of submissions and that kind of thing. And um, sometimes it's not like anything you can put into words that makes you want to like show a piece, right? Um, or, or that makes like an artist's work stand out. It's just um, art truly speaks without words. And and, you know, paintings may be of the same subject, but they can be like depicted in such a different way that it's like the artist is seeing the same subject in a completely different, you know, completely different way. And I just think that's such a beautiful celebration of how we each like see the world differently, you know? Um, yeah, it's, it's just interesting. That's the perfect way to describe it, because that is what we say, you know, um, people come in, you know, they're looking at the artwork and it's sometimes they want an answer for certain things. And it's like, yeah. why this, why do they paint it that way? And that's just how they see it. And mm -hmm. you have to appreciate that. And it's not going to appeal to everyone. Mm -hmm. I, we all know that, you know, everyone's going to have a different view of it, but mm -hmm. it's learning to appreciate the creativity behind it. And that's what I love about art. That's why I chose that as my career, because mm -hmm. no, I don't love every single piece of artwork I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, it's hard. I, the idea of experiencing it is what I love more than anything. And I just want to encourage people to do that too, especially when they walk in the gallery. I want them to, I want to, I want them to ask questions, even if you're not going to buy a piece of artwork, that's okay. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. I get that all the time. You know, it's like, oh, I'm just looking. I'm like, I'm happy you're looking. Please. Yeah. You know? yes. And I, I don't want to scare anyone away. And mm -hmm. that's, I don't want to scare, you know, especially there are artists that come in. I mean, you came in as an artist and so many people just want, you just want the inspiration. And yeah, that's exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think it's prices. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So mm -hmm. what, um, what are some of the favorite, your favorite art experiences that you have experienced? Like um, some of the favorite pieces that you have that you've like stood in front of and you've been like, oh, this is amazing. There's, oh my gosh, it's, it's always a thrill of like a new show that's mm -hmm. and like when experiencing it, especially when it's, it could be a painter that I will see every day. You know, I stare at the same painting, but when I see an overall show together, mm -hmm. it's amazing. I mean, when I experience Jeffrey Johnson is a big one. I, I love because he evolves. I love to see what he does. Um, we have a show coming up. Uh, Joseph Spook bitch is a watercolorist mm -hmm. and, seeing what he can do with watercolor. And I'm just amazed by it because that is such a hard medium. Yeah, I, agree. I could never do it. Um, and it's very unforgiving. You like make one mistake and it's like, okay, that's the entire beast. Exactly. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I couldn't do it, you know, and I just to see what he can come up with and how he controls that medium. Um, but I was just recently with the disrupted realism show because it was artists I had never seen before. I had mm. never seen them. So, um, so many of them, you know, a lot were, we had four artists that we already show and seeing how they looked in person because I had seen all the images and everything. And I was just blown away. Um, Michelle Condrat is featured in the show. Mm -hmm. Her landscapes, I did not know what to expect when I saw them in a photo because they look like a digital painting. There's no brush strokes. Like it's just so clean mm -hmm. and I had no idea what to expect. And I unwrapped them and I was just was like, oh my gosh, I was completely blown away. I thought they were gorgeous. I was like, can I take these home with me? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's my house. And that's a lot of those artists did that. And um, Mia Bergeron featured a gorgeous painting in the show of, it's called Vessel. And it's uh, some Buddhist monks sitting in front of a pool that's just this gorgeous glowing green mm -hmm. and he brought it in and I couldn't stop staring at it. Oh, I just it sounds very peaceful and like inspiring. It really is. And cause she masters that the vibrancy and the paint colors and seeing it, I just, I couldn't believe it. And I just am so amazed by it. And it was so large, you know, it was overwhelming. And I was like, I just want this to stay on the wall forever. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, yeah, there's a there's been a couple of uh, paintings that for me have been like amazing. Well, I saw um, I saw the Ophelia painting actually in Washington D.C. a couple of years ago, um, and you know it's the 
famous pre-Raphaelite one of Ophelia in the water with like all the flowers and everything. Like it's been reproduced a million times, but um, in person, it truly is amazing. I mean, you stand in front of it and it's like, the detail is incredible, but like just the attention to every little value and um, the delicacy of it. I was, that, that painting really was moving to me to see in person. So that's, that's my experience for that. Yeah, that um, was me with Van Gogh's Starry Night when I saw it for the first oh, time. I, nice. <laughs> I, I guess there's a reason why these paintings are famous, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They just pull out that emotion that you just can't control. And that's just what so many pieces do, you know, going to the museum, you're like, these are our rock stars. These are, <laughs> that's how close we can get to, you know, the history and the memory of those people. Yes. Oh, that's so good. And I think mm -hmm. that every artist wants to make at least one piece in their lifetime that's like that, you know, um, mm -hmm. if not more, you know, and at least I do. Uh, I think that's every artist like dream is to try to create something that like transcends time and transcends humanity, transcends mm -hmm. languages. Um, I don't know. That's, that's the dream. It's that drive to get to get there. And mm -hmm that's it's amazing that's why working with living artists is so amazing because you can yeah. see that and it's amazing to see how they enter and you're like they're making history no matter what somebody says like they're making history and that's how I see it mm -hmm. yeah now I have a couple of um questions about like the business of art because this podcast is for um you know artists who are living as well right and mm -hmm. so i'm sure a lot of them have like questions such as um i'm just thinking like for your collectors for instance um mm -hmm. how do you how do you retain the relationships without being too aggressive with your collectors any information about that um taking into account that like a lot of artists have collectors as well um who you know we we want to keep in touch with them we want to really have a great relationship with them. We don't want them to forget about us, um, but we don't want to be like aggressively pursuing them. So do you have any like um, input on that? That's a great question. Um, yes. So it's hard to come off from a sales point of view without being aggressive. It's just quite hard. Um, it mm -hmm. takes time for sure. But when I'm sending, say an artist sends us a new painting or something, you know, and we keep track records of every, most things, what clients have bought within our system goes back to 2011, the modern system, everything else is paper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's maintaining, like seeing their style. And we just reach out and say, Hey, you know, this artist, you purchased this, how long ago we'll reach out and say they have a new painting. Um, but also like, formulating and like talking to them and asking questions like I've gotten into so many thorough conversations with collectors because there's one thing I mean it may seem like you guys are from two different worlds especially as an artist but there's one thing you share in, in common and that is art and so being open to kind of talking about you know how they started their collection is a big one you know when did you start collecting mm -hmm. um it's because I you, it's different when you work with collectors who've been with the gallery for 20 years and people yeah. who just are on their first painting and mm -hmm. so to allow them to do that um but formulating a personal relationship and especially as an artist they want that a collector is over the moon when an, an artist just even sends like a statement about a painting that was purchased creating those personal elements i think is really important collectors love to see progress photos you know if you they show any interest in your painting you know to say oh, I, had, I have this photo of me working on it or a time lapse or something. And they would take that into consideration. They took time out of their creative process or time out of their day to share that with me, to write up something special about the painting. Yeah. And I understand for some artists, you know, to say like, oh, can you throw this statement together? And it's kind of like, well, there's no real statement behind it. Right, right. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay, you know, and just to be forthcoming, but open to talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, and just being willing to have that conversation and to put mm -hmm. yourself out there. And I know, you know, as an artist, it's a solo mm -hmm. thing, you know, you're spending more time with your thoughts and creativity. Mm -hmm. And so many artists have said, oh man, I, you know, I don't want to do an artist talk. I don't want to do that. But 
they move past their fears and they're able to do it. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's really what I could say is like giving them a glimpse Mm -hmm. into how they created something that they fell in love with because a collector who's buying from Christie's or Sotheby's, you know, they're, they know the history, they'll know some knowledge of it, or they have someone that knows something about it. But Mm -hmm. you call up Andy Warhol or Basquiat and say like, Oh, what was the root process here? And Mm -hmm. you can't. So to have that, you know, that's a really good point. That's a great point. Like, um, it's kind of like, it's really special that they, they can just like ask the living artists, like, how did you do this? What was your inspiration Mm -hmm. here? Um, cause like, you know, artists of another age, you literally can't talk to them and it's really sad. Mm -hmm. And like, I would love to talk to some of the artists that, um, have gone before me that I just, I love their work and so inspiring to me. Um, and I just imagine like being, being able to have great conversations with them, but I can't. And so, um, it really is such a privilege to be alive today with the living artists and we can talk to them and yeah, yeah, it's a great point. Yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. That's what is having the conversations and watching collectors have conversations with artists that they love. And they just, really value like they get genuinely excited and it's it's really special and it's worth absolutely and um to follow up on that do you feel like um and I'm going to ask you about like artists um selling from their studios versus like selling with galleries but um and how to do that like gracefully but Mm -hmm. What would you say to um, the collectors that you work with, for instance, do they prefer like a phone call or do you think that they prefer more like an email update in your experience? From the artist necessarily or just for um, from Yeah, from the artist or the gallery, I would say. Um, it's kind of, it varies. I mean, there are some clients who like more personal, they prefer to give us a call. Um, most of our correspondents are via email and we actually talk to a lot of collectors on Instagram. They will oh, reach really? out. Yeah, that's a huge one. So, um, we work with them message wise and it's kind of, cause you can have a little bit more fun. Like there's this conversation it takes away a little bit of this, like super personal, like businessy side of things. And it can right. be a little back and that is how we act in it a little bit. You know, we're not super uptight about certain things like it has to go a certain way mm-hmm. we'll con you know with collectors how they choose mm-hmm. um but they really don't I mean it's hard to say specifically I mean everything is really via email I'd say um it's the easiest way to get a hold of someone <laughs> yeah I agree collect. and it's um, like this. I, I like email as well because there's like a record of it as well um whereas with phone calls like you can forget what you said um right. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, um, and yeah, I, I agree with you. Although I do like the personal like phone calls sometimes too, cause there is something really personal about that. I had, um, a, a contact email me and we were talking about something business related and, um, she ended up, um, I, I couldn't answer my phone cause I was like in another meeting. She ended up recording a voice message, attaching it to an email and sending it to me. And I thought mm-hmm. that was such a creative way to kind of like, um, I don't know, like it added a personal touch, but it was still like in an email. Um, yeah. I thought that was cool. Yeah. yeah, I do love like having conversations like with clients who I've formulated a relationship with and you can sit and talk, you could sit and talk on the phone for a long time yeah. and it is really nice. And a lot of times they just want to talk to you. They do. They really do. Um, and I am more of a phone call person personally, mm-hmm. like if I'm going to talk to someone in my life or, you know, I would rather just call them, um, right. to make sure I don't, cause you can forget to say something in an email, like everything's recorded, but then you can also be like, oh, I gotta send that email again, <laughs> or yeah. you have to follow up and things where it's a, co- a phone call could continue that you can thoroughly get, um, all the information. Like when we, someone purchases something, it's usually a phone call. Um, mm-hmm. so we, get all to make sure if we're shipping it to get all that thorough information and to be very transparent about the process right that, that's what we're all about absolutely so um it sounds like being really personal um and personal yet professional and um being really open with you know people who want to buy your work now 
I know that in today's day and age, it's kind of like the, the landscape is shifting, it seems to be like in the art world, um, whereas galleries are still extremely important. But with the advent of social media, it seems that a lot of artists um, are like just like kind of blowing up by themselves without like any help. And so, um, but a lot of artists like to do it all. They kind of want to sell work on their own and then they want to work with galleries. Now, um, now as a gallerist, what would you say to that practice? And do you have any kind of thoughts about how to do that ethically as an artist? It's, I mean, it's good to have different avenues. Mm -hmm. If your goal as an, if your goal is just, just sell the artwork, then I would, you know, doing it on your own and kind of learning that business sense is a good skill, no matter what, um, to get a name out there, mm -hmm. to have that, your personal, how you, your shop or however you, you choose to do it, whether it's have them contact you, you know, be more personal, call, call you or, um, contact you directly or to buy from a website. Um, and then having a gallery, I mean, choosing a gallery based on your sense of business. If you, you know, goes, you have a conversation, you're like, I don't really like the right fit, you know, then don't do it. And then just say, you know, I'm going to pick one to three galleries that I want to work with and then spend more of my time working on my own um, to gather that business sense. I mean, yes, it's easier to just say, here's all my artwork. Like you sell it for me, do all this work. I'll create the work. And that's, it makes total sense. I get it. It's, you know, to go with all the idea of business and, you know, having to talk to people about money and it's, it's an awkward thing, you know, yeah. and yeah. to take that out for an artist is helpful, but everything is digital now. Mm -hmm. So you want to get your name out online, which I think is really important. I think it's, as an artist, it's valuable to have a website, to have mm -hmm. social media, to have something where people can find you. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't say there's it's necessarily a preference. Um, mm -hmm. It's how the artist feels fits their technique, mm -hmm. and how they choose to put their artwork out there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's interesting how different artists, I mean, there's some that have worked with galleries and then they say, you know what, I've reached a point, I'm gonna go on my own. And yeah. I respect, it. I think that's valuable. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, people ask us all the time, you know, artists that we don't show anymore or, and you know, are they still working or whatnot? And they're like, yeah, we'll send you their website. You know, we'll send them your email address so they can get in contact with that artist. Just because they're not showing in our gallery anymore doesn't mean they're not still an artist and they're not still working. So yeah, we want to encourage that and to, and they've reached a point they found, their name was found through us and we want to keep that relationship. Okay. That is what gallery. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's really great advice. And um, so it sounds like as a gallerist, you, it doesn't so much matter if the artist is like selling work on their own, or if they're like working with multiple galleries, um, or if they're doing a mixture of all that, as long as they're kind of like keeping within their agreements, and just um, like acting ethically in all that, like being upfront about it. Is that, is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, because I mean, ethically, you know, if you are an artist, you are promised to a gallery for a show, whether you represent with them or not. Um, if you're promised a painting to them, you know, you've mm -hmm. sent to the gallery, you said, this is what we're, we're sending you. Mm -hmm. And then someone reaches out and the artist sells it themselves. Mm -hmm. I understand, you know, that's you're like, I want to, I want to get that sale. Right. But technically we do need to be included because we were promised that piece of artwork. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, ethically where we stand on that you know mm -hmm. if you're selling artwork I mean artists are obviously going to sell um what they want to and they'll give galleries what they want as well so that's like no I think I can sell this on my own mm -hmm. do it 100 do it we that money is yours and it's you've earned it mm -hmm. um but that's the only thing I can say when I look at it and I've seen it happen and it's kind of like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it puts it does yeah. put a bad in the mouth of the yeah, yeah, I could see that. I, I actually, I, I asked this because I literally had this happen this morning. So um, I work with um, a gallery. I, well, it doesn't matter. I work with a Bend Gallery and um, they, um, 
I just submitted two paintings to them um, for their miniature show. And then somebody reached out literally this morning and was like, oh, um, I saw this painting and um, on your website and I'm really interested in it. Um, can you tell me like the price and all this stuff? And I'm like, well, literally yesterday, I like, um, I told the gallery that I would give it to them. So I'm gonna have to like refer it to the gallery. Um, but, you know, it's it's those like little micro decisions. I think that um, artists have to like think about because you have to think about like your reputation long-term not just like, um, you know, getting a couple hundred dollars, right? Um, Cause you wanna keep that, the relationship is more important, I think. Yeah, it's because yeah. it, like, it's reputation. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's, it is, I get it. That decision you have to sit and you're like, okay, morally, you know, what do I want? Do I, and do I want to maintain this relationship with this gallery down the road? If you have no intention of it, then that's the quick way to just say like, yeah, I think it's time for us to part ways. Right. And if you don't feel you'll be treated fairly, mm -hmm. then do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you're in, um, all the artists out there are in business with galleries that they like, so. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. that's assuming that they are well that's very interesting okay so um I know we're kind of like um about to wrap it up but I did have just a couple more questions if that's okay yeah. um so I was wondering what have what are some of like the challenges that you have when you're running the gallery um and then what are some of like your favorite parts about it oh man um well challenging why is I have that's it um challenge is like I said earlier like keeping up with everybody who's working you know trying to take in as much as I can and um mm -hmm. and also because we are looking always looking for new artists trying to say like pick out the ones it's like oh I like those personally because mm -hmm. taste can be a little bit different I'm on the bit of the what the director likes to say he's like I'm on the weirder side of things like, <laughs> I like a little bit more there um mm -hmm. like, movements or like surrealism and those kinds of things so that's what speaks to me um but when I'm looking at the artist I have to separate that in my head I'm like okay what would do we have a market you know for that and sometimes that can be really challenging um because okay yeah just the, it's risk and um trying to keep that online um and then one of the biggest things is having to appeal to everyone that walks in the door <laughs> that's very difficult um and everything art is always up for debate when you look at it you know someone is always trying to sit, first thing it's like face value everyone's like oh no i don't like that and then they move on and i'm like no i just want to explain to you what you know what goes behind this and sometimes that's really hard you know and to me, I just kind of take it as like, you know, that's not their thing and that's that's fine. Um, mm -hmm. People don't always want to look as closely at things, especially art, if that's not their brains necessarily, you know, it's like people are more visual. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to look at it, you know, I'm like, I know my taste, that person next to me is not gonna have the same taste. I mean, in the gallery working, we all have different opinions and what we like and, but we can all sit and be like, no, that's a great painting. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, those are two challenges that I deal with um, on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, but getting to teach people about art is one of my favorite things because I'm more um, facts and sharing things about art history. And um, mm -hmm. I spend my time doing research on the artists we represent. Um, right you know, how they made it, what kind of goes into that process. Mm -hmm. So love to share that with people. And when people want to listen, I'm happy to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and getting to watch artists as they grow is just so beautiful. And getting to, when something sells to, there's certain artists that we represent and you tell them and every time, it does not matter how many paintings they've sold and they get so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yes it could just be one small painting and they're like oh yeah, thank you and they're just like yeah. so appreciative and I love when that happens and mm -hmm. I when I'm selling something because like I see that person in my head and I'm like that's great you have this new thing in your collection as a collector like thank you for supporting the gallery but I in my head I'm like that person's gonna get this check and they're gonna be so happy <laughs> this made yeah. their day you know um and 
because there are there's so many it's just they're so just very humble you mm-hmm. know it's like they can be selling so many paintings and every time you sell and it's like they're just like wow somebody actually wants stuff in their home and or in their business or wherever they want to put it mm-hmm. and I love that <laughs> it's, yeah I love that too that's that's so mm-hmm. great and I always it's always interesting to me, like what paintings people choose, because I've had like people buy paintings of mine that I'm like, I don't really like them anymore. Or, um, of course I don't say that, but, um, (laughs) I'm like, I've learned so much more since then, but like something will grab them about it. And they'll be like, Oh, this, I just love this and this, or like the painting will be like kind of dark and they'll be like, Mm -hmm. Oh, I just, you know, I, I don't know something about it. They just really like, and, um, they'll be like so enthusiastic about it and I'm like over it, but, um, Mm -hmm. but they love it. And, um, it's always a surprise to me, like what some people like, um, there's something for everyone. And I, I always say there's, there's always a buyer for every piece. Um, somebody will resonate with that. You know, I always say it's like the right time and it's the right person. And there's paintings that will sit around, I mean, for years and I'm sitting and I'm, I'll be sitting down. I'm like, I am so surprised that painting is not sold. I yeah. love it so much. Right. And it's, it is stunning. You know, it's just, there's so many that I feel that way. And then mm-hmm. someone just comes in and they're like, they fall in love with it. And I was like, it's been sitting here waiting for you. Like, right. like <laughs> yes, yes. So like it was 100%. Like I believe in that mm-hmm. wholeheartedly because it's so true. And it's just, they walk in and you're like, it's been four years. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Been- Yes. Take it. (laughs) Absolutely. I totally agree. That's so crazy. (laughs) Um, Okay. So last question is um, for all the artists out there. um, Do you have any, can you tell us about kind of some of the systems in your gallery? And Mm -hmm. if you have any insights about how artists might be able to use um, the systems or similar systems that you use in a gallery to manage their own studio practice? Um, One of our main what we thrive on is a system called ACT and it's a contact system. So it's a great way you can put notes in about someone who's bought something from you, their email addresses. You can pull those from that system and use a newsletter. We use Robly as our newsletter. Um, It's a really, it has like, it's kind of touches that can be annoying, but it's a great and a very user-friendly system as well. Um, So those two communicate very well because you can export contacts mm-hmm. and very easily, all you need to do is just make sure you have the right email and then upload that into Robly and just send it. Um, and Robly, you, know, you can put as many images in. When we send out a newsletter, we want images. We want people to see the artwork and we don't wanna bog them down with too much word and you know verbiage on certain things because we want to encourage them to reach out. You know, We want to encourage them to you know, ask us questions. Um, those are two systems um, that I would highly recommend. Act you can purchase with different, um, like a computer. You can purchase like for one computer or multiple, depending okay. on mm-hmm. um, if it's you know a gallery or just an individual studio. Mm-hmm. Um, we are about to start using Artsy. Oh, um, cool. Okay. Yeah, we just had a meeting with someone yesterday about that, so we're going to. Thank you. It's exciting. We've been looking at it for so long and I've always used it as a resource, um, mm-hmm. especially when looking up you know, current market values for clients who are, you know, have paintings from five years ago. That's a great resource. Mm-hmm. Um, don't know the ins and outs of it yet, but uh, we're looking into it. So we're excited. Um, and we use, we had our own website designed through WordPress, mm-hmm. which I highly recommend to use for a website um because you can toggle with it a little bit more than like squarespace um and uh you know having a designer we did work with a designer who got us started but mm-hmm. everything else ourselves mm-hmm. and another was podium podium okay. is a system that you can embed into your website and uh, collectors or anyone can reach out to you directly as like a text message but you can manage it from your computer. You don't, you can have it on your phone, but you can manage it from your computer and people can, it's just like instant messaging. You know, someone can look at a page and you can see what page they're looking at from your site. So if they're looking for wow. individual, yeah, it's really cool. I, it's a great system and it uh, is really quick. Like it just makes that process like 
you know, a sale can be done in five minutes versus like an email thread can kind of maybe take hours kind of back and forth. Um, but podium, oh, just so I'm going to have to like, look into that. That's, that it, sounds really yeah. cool. I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's great. And like, you can start with just a free version. Um, mm -hmm. you're limited to like a number of conversations. I think it's like a hundred conversations per month and they might, yeah, it is a lot. Yeah. When you hear it and people are like, Oh, and there was a while where, you know, it was when we first got it going, like there was just so many messages coming in and then we're like, well, we haven't hit our hundred yet, but let's maybe just like up it just a little bit and pay for it. But, um, that was, that's a great system. And, um, two other ones is issue. You can make your own catalog on mm. and take photos and upload those kind of like make them as a PDF and upload the PDF and it'll embed and you can scroll through images. Okay. Um, so that's too. And that's free to use. I don't believe you have to pay for that at all um it's issue i s s u u okay um, yeah and that's that's great um i've seen it used a couple other galleries use it um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's a great way to when we send out previews for clients we just send them that because it's yeah. it's more for, you know they can see absolutely wow what so, a great tip yeah those are great those are all great systems that we've um started to use and we've had great success with Amazing. Thank you so much. That's, those are like invaluable. Um, yeah. So this has been absolutely amazing. I've learned so much and, um, I really appreciate your insights. And, um, is there anything else, any words of encouragement you would have for artists out there who are listening to you? I would say, do not be afraid to evolve mm -hmm. as an artist, evolve your work, um, to, take those risks and um, when taking risks, stay in line with what you're already creating, but show it where you're taking what you've already done and then take it just a step further. Um, I've watched that success happen with artists that we've carried for years mm -hmm. and seeing how they've stayed, they've maintained their um, attention and just like their desire from people is mm -hmm. evolving and changes. It can be the slightest change, but it's enough for someone to go, Oh, is that so-and-so's work a collector and then they're they're like oh I like the direction they're going in right, so right. I would say to 100% just whatever ideas are flowing through your brain just try it you know work it out it takes reps you know just keep those reps going yeah and yeah get that and um because that'll take you and continue the career you want to have because you'll hit you know whatever attention you want with what you're creating and that's great and but it's going to how do you show a new generation, a new group of collectors? Mm -hmm. And that's the best advice I could give to an artist that's just starting or has reached a point. Maybe, you know, we all reach kind of those moments where it's like, okay, it's, I'm at a standstill here. I'm, right. I'm doing, but how do I change that? And I think that's a really important thing because in studying how um, eras of artwork and it changes, and it's always how will those artists kind of flow with it? and mm -hmm. evolve. I love it. Yes. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Taylor. Um, I really enjoyed talking with you. And I know that um, a lot of the artists are going to love this, um, this input that you have shared so freely. And um, oh, and we didn't even touch on disrupted realism. Is it still up, by the way? It is. Yes. Um, it will still be up. And we are going to start deinstalling starting next week okay. um because we have a two day show a two day photography exhibition from a local photographer chester simpson is Ooh. going to be roll legends photos he was a famous um rock and roll photographer he worked actually with ansel adams wow. <laughs> and um he followed along from 70s to 80s followed along with a lot of major bands and so he's going to share his photos with us for two days and then he's going to take it down to charleston for a little bit and show it down there and so that's what we're going to be deinstalling for that to give Chester his, uh, his show in the front room, but it's going to be really yeah. awesome. And, um, for those of, um, the artists listening who would love to visit principal or would like more information, um, what, how, how would they contact you? So, um, our email is info at principalgallery.com. Um, our phone number is 703-739-9326. And um, principalgallery.com is our website and you it directs you to both pages. So you'll see Alexandria 
or Charleston. Um, I'm at Alexandria, 208 King Street, and um, that has all the information. You can contact us through that website as well, directly from the website, in addition to our email. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Taylor. I so enjoyed this, and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. You too. Thank you for having me. Have a great one. Bye. Bye.